Hey, what's good with y'all? How y'all doing out there, family? I hope y'all having a great, great, great day, great night, great evening, great morning, great time, great you, great family, great everything. I hope it's going the way that you're playing for the go. And I hope that you're making your dreams come true and you're getting rid of all them people that ain't trying to help you get your dreams to come true. I hope y'all having a good one today, fam, because we are about to get ready and talk about something that might get up under some people's skin. But hey, I'm going to talk how I feel about it, baby. I want to talk about it. I've been saying feelings. I've been saying this for some a minute now. And this is how I feel. And sometimes you can't really talk about this topic. This is a... um. On the church, you can't talk about the church unless you're talking about the church the way that somebody wants you to talk about the church, but you can't have an opposite opinion of how you feel about the church. Hey, we've been talking about it. I'm going to run this clip. Oh, excuse me. This clip from Dr. Um, Umar Johnson, and then we're going to come back and we're going to get some uh, opinions on what Dr. Umar is about to say in this clip, you know, so we... All right, seen this on TikTok, man. This is um, I like this, I like this. All right, yeah, here we get ready to rock and roll. All right, let's go. When you put your money in the church bucket, what do you get back? Hope in a future after you die. And my position on that, if I have to die to experience heaven, I don't need that religion. Mm. Anyone who tells me that I should be content with accepting hell on earth when the white man has his heaven here and the Chinese man has his heaven here and the Arab and East Indian has his heaven here and they're even building their heaven in my ghetto. And you're telling me I got to die in order to experience what they are getting right now. That's a religion I don't need because that's a religion for servitude. And so we have to put the black church to task and ask them, what are you doing without Jesus money? Let me tell you what they're doing with your Jesus money. Every black church in America has their money in a white bank. It is the white banks that are funding the regentrification ethnic cleansing movement. So all of us go to church. We put $3 million in the church coffers every Sunday. $3 million goes to a white bank every Sunday. And guess what they do on Monday? They take three million of black people's white Jesus money and they give loans to white land developers and businesses and entrepreneurs to come into the ghetto where the church is located, buy up all the property and force grandma out on the street homeless. Now, grandma been going to that church for 30 years. Grandma been giving that church $50 every Sunday. And lo and behold, grandma had to finally face the reality. That it was your Jesus money that put your ass on the street. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Dr. Umar, man, he said some stuff right there, man. Um. He said some stuff right there, man. We I'm going to give y'all my opinion right now. All right. I don't know. Y'all probably not agree with me on this. Y'all might do agree with me. I don't know, but I'm going to still give y'all my opinion on it. You know, I don't know. All right. First off, the question is, you know, I want to make sure that I'm telling y'all I believe in God. I wouldn't have nothing that I have if it wasn't for the higher power that's that's off, off top. I wouldn't have just right here, this camera, this mic, these, this stuff that I'm talking to you do, the internet, all this. If it wasn't for the graces of God, I wouldn't have nothing at all. Now, with that being said, let me jump into this. Do the Bible and all these churches and going to church and listen to a preacher and a, a preacher ain't nothing but a man. What makes the man that's saying, telling me some words, what makes his connection to God stronger than mine? What makes when he put his hands together and pray and say, talk to the God, what makes God come and say, if I go talk to him, pew, block your prayers, got to go through that preacher, and then they're going to come to me. Get up out of here. My connection is directly to him. Why do I have to go to a church house in order to get uh, my connection with God? Why can't I have him right here in front of this podcast and I'm talking to y'all We and have my connection directly to God? Why do I got to wait till Sunday at 
8 a.m. service or 12, uh, a 7 a.m. service or, 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 or 11 a.m. service to go and talk with God instead of white night, instead of saying on Sunday morning and had that conversation. When I can just wake up right now and whatever I'm going through, I can just talk to God and go out there to figure out the solution. Who appointed a middleman of a man that bleeds the same way, that dies the same way that I'm going to die and has to get up and go work the same way that I got to work? Or one man that I got to go through them to talk to the person that created both of us. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. It don't make sense at all to me. Who, 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 who appointed that? My connection is, is through God. And you know how I know I my connections through God? Because everything I done got is I ain't went through no preacher to get it. I done prayed and got on my knees and I still pray every second and every day that I move and I'm going to pray until I leave this earth. That I'm a, And I'm going to pray a prayer with work and action is what I'm going to continue to do. Prayer and action is what I'm going to do. And so I don't have to have no man that's a, a man or one man that's like, that's that bleeds and hey, can die and can pass on just as I, like I can just to go talk with a higher power. I don't have to do that. Now, with how I feel about the Bible, I do believe people, the word, I do believe God has some very powerful words. When I tell you, I think the words that God gave out was so powerful, man, they couldn't let us get them words, man, because it's so powerful. It would, it would, it would break the system that man has put in place. Man has put a structured system in place that has been working for hundreds of years and some places thousands of years. Why would they let you get hold to some of the words that the higher power has that would even imbalance out the eye? It would conflict with the program that they have put in place. Uh, take a double XL magazine, take a, um, 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 regular book, my book that I'm getting ready to write about my night when I was going to happen at 19. All these are going to be ran on print and press, or you can read the words on the screen. Come on, man. Let's think about this. Anything can be altered that a man write down that he has control of. He can alter it and make it seem how he want to make it seem. Look it up. They took the ABCs to the gay BCs. They took the King James version to the Queen to the Queen James version. Like, come on, bro. How can you not see that stuff is not getting altered? But now, back to um, back to this. What um, Doctor Umar Johnson said. You know what I'm saying? When you put money in the church, what do you get back from the church? You should be able to put. If the church is telling you to do ten percent into that church, you've been putting money into the church for years and years and years and years. Then you finally hit a hard time. You shouldn't have to go to the bank to get a high interest loan. You should be able to go straight to that same church that you've been putting your money into and the preacher should be able to give you a loan. But you know what I don't like? I hate when I see a preacher, when I used to go to church and a preacher say, brother or sister such and such need, family needs help. We ask that y'all could donate some money to brother, sister, such and such and such and this sister, such and such. Why you got to put their business out into the whole church? The church should need that. Cause you just go, you don't, you don't have to go in there and say, brother such and such, and brother sister such and such donated this much and gave us this much and put this in my pocket and told me to do this. And you don't tell all that, but why you got to tell their business when they came to you to the church when they donated their money to the church? They didn't tell her all their business. So it shouldn't be no no reason for if they've been investing into this church every Sunday faithfully that they can't come to their church on hard times and say, hey. I need help. Imagine if a person been putting up three hundred dollars into a church every month for the last ten years. That's what. Um, let me think. That's thirty six. That's thirty six hundred dollars. And then you do that times ten years. That's thirty six thousand dollars they didn't put into the church in ten years. They didn't put thirty six thousand one person. And you can't come back and they say, okay, look, I fell on hard times. For the church to come back and say, man, we done made in 10 years off the money that's been put in, the interest that we done put into the banks, we done made, maybe, I, I don't know the way they 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 have accounts, they could probably get them a 10% return on a lot of that money. So if they get 10% return on that 36000 and I'm going to just make it easier, 
um, and let's round it up to 40,000 so I can do the math faster. But they getting um, um, 10% return on that $4,000. So I want to make sure 10% of 4,000 is, is 400. You know what I'm saying? So if you do 400 times 10, that's $4,000. Even if they gave them the interest that they'd have made on the four years, say, here go a $4,000 check just on the interest of what we'd have made out the thirty, the $40,000 that you'd have put in. I took it up to the 40 just to make it easier for my math. You go to the interest on that 40, that, 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 that 40,000 you'd have put in to help you through this hard time. You could even do that. Come on. But you don't get nothing back out of that. They, they, they tell you, hey, the, um, they they try to sit you up and send you over to certain programs or tell you that um um put your business out like I say in the street. Come on, bro. What do you get? I feel like the church brainwashes people, man. The the, the church has customers, and the the people that come to the church are their customers. Just like my landscaping company, I have customers. You know. They come, they call for my landscaping and I send the crew out and my guys go out and we do the job and they pay us for the job. And, you know, we have to keep coming out to do the job. But the church has customers that shows up every Sunday and some show up four times a week. Bible study, revival, rehearsal with all these different things that they showing up for the church multiple times. So you got um, you got the church that brainwash these people, man. And have a lot of people um believing in the faith. In my in my uh, uh uh opinion and thought of what church should be, church is meant for we all are preachers in some form, shape, or fashion. Cause you learn something that I can that I don't know. I learn something that you don't know. And we should pick a certain day that we all meet up on and share that experience so we all learn from each other, but not for one person to hold enough knowledge to only say, Hey, I'm gonna spoon feed you enough to keep you coming back every Sunday to where it take you forever to get the pieces to put them together. Man, stop putting your faith in another man because man is man. I always remember that. And then I, I'm going to sum it up with this on um, Dr. Umar, like he was saying, the money that you put into the church is the same money that they use to come back and hurt you. The banks use the same money from the black church that they get in front of the church to come back and hurt you. Come on, man. I think the Catholic church is one of the most richest church in the world. The richest in the world, man. So you put your money into a, a black church. Like you say, they take that $3 million for that month. They put that $3 million that's going to collection into the church account. That goes into a Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, um, um, uh, and now these other banks. The money goes into them banks. Um the SunTrust ain't around no more. I can't think of the name of it. Oh, Truist. It goes into these banks. All right. Now that money, that bank takes that money, like he say. How they doing the regentrification over there in um in off MLK uh by Mosley Park. They start doing that. And now these other places that they're doing regentrification. Some businessmen that don't go to church at all or don't never been to your church or nothing. Goes to that bank and say, hey, I need to borrow $10 million. We're going to buy this community out and redo this whole community and um, redevelop it. And I want you to give me a 2% interest loan on it, on the money. And um, let me borrow it. So they give them the money. That developer come in, buy up everything, increase your property taxes, and force you to have to sell and move out or lose your property off of the money, like he say, that you put into that church. Your own, you paid for your own eviction. Like, like, like when you think about it, you paid for your own eviction and didn't even know it. And now you can't even go to the church to get help. You out on the street. Come on, man. If I'm going to give back 10%, I'm giving it directly to the people, man. I ain't giving it to no church. I don't mind giving the 10%. If I made 10 million, I mean, I got to give a million away. I'm giving it directly to y'all. I'm giving my million to y'all. I'm coming to give it back to y'all. Put it in y'all pocket. I'm not going to give it to a church and get that million dollars to that church when I can go over here and help all these people out here 
um help these single mothers, the single fathers, these um these uh these families, these um group, the families, the mothers and the fathers that's trying to raise their kids together and need to get a, a boost and somebody can come in and help them create jobs and get them a job so they can keep helping themselves. Like they say, you don't give a man a fish, you teach a man how to fish and he'll be able to feed his family for life. So I give it back to y'all. If I'm if I'm giving out my 10%, I'm not giving it to no church, no man, for him to go buy him a Lamborghini or he, he go cheat on his wife and buy her a brand new Ferrari or something. And, and, and then using the money that's supposed to be for the church to help the church people because of his infidelities to wine and dine his wife. Get up out of here, man. Miss me with that. Mm, y'all might agree with me. Y'all might not, but that was a true statement, man. That, that, that's true to, from my heart, how I feel. You don't have to go talk to another man to talk to you to the to the same creator that created both of y'all. Have your relationship directly with him. Get your blessings directly to you. Don't let no man brainwash you or no woman brainwash you. She got me, man. We about here. I love y'all family. I really do. I hope y'all keep rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how I feel on this situation. I, I rock with what Dr. Uma said. Let's get it, baby. Love y'all.